Hi guys, so in this lesson we're going to set up VPC peering and we'll do so between two regions and in each region we'll have a VPC, so a custom VPC with these cider blocks. Now um, we did create one earlier on but I'm going to create both of these fresh so that you can start from scratch with this section if you want to. Otherwise if you've already created your first region you can just use the one we used earlier. So we'll create two VPCs in different regions using these cider blocks We'll have a public subnet. We'll launch EC2 instances into those public subnets, update our route tables, and set up our security groups. And then we'll try and ping these instances using private addresses. So firstly, I'm in US East North Virginia here. And what I'm gonna do is create a VPC. I'm gonna call this my VPC-NV. I'm going to create this one as 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and we'll create that VPC. We're then going to go to Internet Gateways, create an Internet Gateway, call this my-igw. So it's really good to get more practice because you really need to know how to use VPCs for the exam. So let's now attach our IGW. So we've got our Internet Gateway attached. Now. I want to go back to my VPC actually. I need to set up a couple of things. So under actions, I want to set up DNS host names. I want to enable that. I want to go to DNS resolution and make sure that's checked. So we've got that checked as well. So we've got our internet gateway and what we need to do now is go to our route table because we need a route to our internet gateway. So let's choose the correct route table here and we're going to edit, add and put in 0.0. .0. I'll just take that from the drop down. So it's going to be any address that's outside of our range here is going to go via the internet gateway. Let's save that. And I'm just going to create one public subnet. So let's create one. And this is going to go into the US East 1A availability zone. I'm going to call this public dash 1a make sure it's in the correct VPC and it will be 10.0.0.0 slash 24 for the subnet mask and that's basically that site set up now in the interest of time what I'm going to do is launch a instance into this VPC so let's choose to launch an instance I'm going to use a Linux 2 AMI T2 micro, we're going to make sure we choose the new VPC and we're in our public subnet here. And then let's go to security groups and we're going to create a new security group. So it's going to be called web access. It's going to have port 22 initially. We'll need to add in another entry later on. We'll see that shortly. So let's just, I need to create a new key pair for this region. So let's create a new key pair call it my kp nv and I'm going to download that one and let's launch that instance and then what we need to do is head over to our second region my second region is going to be northern california so here I'm going to create a vpc called my vpc nc the side of block is going to be 10.1.0.0/16 let's create that one then we're going to do the same process so we're going to go create our internet gateway, attach it to the VPC, set up the correct options here for, I want DNS host na names to be enabled. We'll go to our route table, select the correct route table, and again, just put that route in. So we've got our 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0, and then that's gonna go to our internet gateway. Click on save. And then lastly, we go to subnets again, create a public subnet so this is going to be called public dash what's the availability zone it's 1b so I'm going to call that 1b put it in the correct VPC cider block will be 10.1.0.0 slash 24 and create that subnet and the last thing that I've got to do and I have to do this on the other one as well actually is modify auto assign IPv4 addresses. So you've got to make sure you assign that because we want to get a public address so we can connect to our instances. So back in region one, I'm going to do the same thing, make sure I've got my public subnet 
set to pick up public IP addresses. So now instances launched into this public subnet will get an IP, a public IP, and they've got a route to an internet gateway. So that's all good. So the next thing to do is set up our peering connection. And for this, we'll need the VPC ID of the other VPC. So back in North California, I'm going to copy the VPC ID and then we're going to create a peering connection in our primary region. Just call this my dash peer. We choose the VPC for the requester. That's going to be the VPC that we just created. Now it's going to be in the same account. If it was in a different account, you'd have to put in the account ID. We don't have to do that now. So let's choose my account, other region, and we're going to choose US West, North California. Put in the ID of the VPC and then create peering connection. So that's being created. That's okay that. And come back and it says it's initiating the request. So let's come back over to North California, click on peering connections, and this one is pending acceptance. So we just need to go in and accept the request. So that's done. What we need to do now is make sure we update our route tables because remember we've got to have the destinations and the peering IDs set so that routing can happen between the VPCs. So in North California, we're going to have this entry here, which is 10.00/16, which is going to go to this VPC. So we go to route tables, choose our route table, and we're going to enter this route, and this is going to be to 10.0.0.0/16, and this data is going to go via the peering connection. We'll save that. Now back on the VPC in North Virginia, we need to do the same thing. So we go to route tables choose our route table, edit, add, and it's going to be 10.1.0.0 slash 16. And again, we choose the VPC peering connection and save the route. And that's it. So now we can launch two instances. So we need to launch our instances into those public subnets, and then we should be able to connect to them and see if we can ping the instance in the opposite VPC. We might have to modify our security groups though before we can do that. So let's go to EC2. I'm going to launch a Linux 2 AMI, T2 Micro, choose my new VPC. It's got one subnet which is public. I'm going to select a security group that has port 22 open and then let's launch this instance. You need to do that for the other VPC now. So just launch another instance with the same settings in the public subnet we just created. And then once you've connected into both instances, we'll see if we can ping from one instance to the other. So I'm connected into my instances. I've got the one in North California, excuse me, North Virginia in blue, and then North California is in green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and ping across from one of these instances to the other. So let's try and ping 10, dot one dot zero dot thirty one and I'm not expecting this to work because we don't have the security group set up but I just wanted to show you that it's not working first so it's zero percent zero received a hundred percent packet loss and then it should be the same the other way around so that's what's expected let's go and set up our security groups properly back in EC2 in North Virginia let's go to security groups I'm going to select my web access security group Let's edit the inbound rules and then let's add one. And this is going to be ICMP all. And then we're going to put in the CIDR block of the opposite VPC. So it's going to be this 10100 slash 16. So obviously you could lock that down to your subnets or individual instances, whatever you want, but you can't use security group IDs in this case because it's across regions. So let's save that rule and now let's try and update the Northern California security group. So we'll just add the same rule in, ICMP all for v4, and then this should be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So that's the CIDR block for region one. So that's set up, let's try and rerun those pings. So let's rerun, and there we go, we get a successful connection, and we're pinging using the private IP address of the instance in that VPC. Let's try it the other way around just to make sure this works as well. And that's all working. So 
That's great. So we're now connecting across VPCs in different regions using a VPC peer and connect. So that all worked very well. Let's just clean up our configuration now. All we need to do is come back in. Obviously we need to terminate our instances. And once those are terminated, we can then go to VPC and we can just delete our VPC peering connection. So we literally just come in and delete VPC peering connection and that will delete both sides of the connection as well. So that's all you need to do. Really it was just the EC2 instances that were costing money anyway, but um, we removed the peering connection and it's totally up to you whether you remove the VPC as well.